Hello! I'm Anne from Cards or Die Board Gaming and I'm here today to chat to you about Nine Men's Morris which is a strategy game that was popular in Roman times and it's still relatively popular today. Uh, one of the nice things about Nine Men's Morris is that as soon as you start setting up you're playing the game. So I'll chat you through how to play, okay? Nine Men's Morris has played over three phases. The first phase, like I said, is where you're setting up, but you're already playing. So you take turns to place the pieces. But what you're aiming to do is to get three of your pieces in a row, okay? So you can do that that way or that way. So vertically or horizontally, not diagonally. That doesn't work. Once you get three pieces in a row, you can remove a, an opponent's piece you choose. OK, so that means that as soon as you start setting up, you're paying attention, you're actually playing the game. So we take turns to set up, to place pieces uh, like so. And you're trying to block your opponent all the time. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. So let's pretend I haven't noticed that for sake of argument. So yellow is made a mill. A row of three so yellow is going to go ahead and remove one of my red pieces so they're going to remove this piece okay and that's completely removed from the game you don't get that back so it's red's turn red goes here yellow is going to block them and you carry on setting up like so I've forgotten whose turn it is because I'm playing both pieces uh, I think that was yellow, so red's going to go there. Yeah, I've done something wrong. Anyway, that's the setup roughly. Okay, so that's phase one done. So some pieces may already have been removed, like this poor chap. Phase two is where you move your pieces one place, and again, you're trying to make those mills so that you can remove other people. So, for instance, um, you move along the lines, so I might try and make my line of three here, so I might move this one to here. However, if I do that, that's allowing this yellow to make a mill again, so then they would remove a red piece. They can remove any red piece on the board. I'm going to choose this one, and I'll tell you for why. If I don't remove that one, next turn, let's remove that one, say, for now, so they've removed that red. Next turn, red is going to block yellow in, because if they don't, yellow will just simply move from here to here and keep making that mill. Now, some people play that you can't do that rule, but like with all traditional games, you get that variety of house rules and things passed on by word of mouth. So it's really up to you to clarify that before you start playing, but we always play that that is acceptable. It just makes it harder then. And it also makes the setup more important uh, because obviously you need to be making sure that when you set up, you can see that yellow is already set to make some of those moves really easily. Whereas red is going to have much more of a difficult time getting themselves into a position. They would need these to be empty to make that mill. So they're in a more difficult position because of the setup. So the setup is really, really important. So that is phase two. In order to win the game, you need to make it so that your opponent can't make any mills or any rows of three, which would mean that they would be reduced to two pieces. The third phase of the game begins when someone is reduced to three pieces. So let's just go ahead and reduce those down a little bit. So we'll reduce red to three because they were already on the back foot, weren't they? They were already losing. And we'll take some yellows out because we'll say that red was uh, catching up a little bit. Okay, so the yellows are quite spread out. So the yellows are gonna try and move across here. Red now can do something called flying because they've only got three pieces left. What they can do is they can move to any space on the board. Okay, yellow, however, cannot. So yellow still needs to move space by space to try and complete a mill somewhere. Red doesn't have that difficulty, so red can go to there. So it makes that anticipation of what the next move might be a little bit more difficult. So yellow is still...
still trying to make a mill and red makes one it means as well that you're not out do you know what I mean so even if you get down to three pieces the game's not over some strategy games you know that you've lost at some point you know that there's no point really carrying on because the other person has obviously won but the nice thing about nine men's morris is that's not so obvious and it's it gives it a little bit more balance and the other nice thing about nine men's morris is it's such a basic board that you can very very easily just draw a board out so you don't even need the original you know you don't need to buy a copy of it if you want to have a go at it and see if you like it it's an ancient game so at times it would have been played by simply you know scraping out hollows and marking out lines in maybe sandstone or on the beach or wherever and then all you need are just some pieces i've got some play money so you could very easily play with like some pennies and some five piece mine are old five piece so they're massive but you could very easily set it up and have a game of it and just see how you get on with it to see if you really like it there are plenty of gorgeous like wooden sets of, of nine men's morris out there there are lots of really nice versions of it but you can very easily rustle one up so that's another bonus of the game so i hope you've enjoyed that and i hope um i hope some of you go out and have a little go at it let me know how you get on and let me know if you've got any questions as well It'd be lovely to hear from you cheers then bye